just below the level of the road that you see down there. But as you can see, the hill goes way up above us. So we're about 70 metres from the top of the hill. Walking back towards the visitor's centre. So where we come out is just above the visitor's centre again. So if you park your cars at the visitor's centre, when you get out, take the right hand turn. I'll show you when we get there. They'll take you back to the visitor's centre. Down to your left will bring us back to where we've started here. Is anyone going directly from this cave to the ferry cave for a tour? No, so we're all good there. That's good. We've got some rules in the cave. First rule, you know what it is, kids? First rule. Come on. Have fun. <laughs> no point doing this if it's not fun, right? <laughs> exactly. Now, the best way for it not to be fun, or the easiest way for it not to be fun, is hit your head on a rock. We're going into a cave. Right? We've altered the cave in places, so we've got handrails, electric lights, and things like that. But we are going into a cave, so remember to duck when you need to. If you've got a baseball cap on, you're better off with it back to front so you don't lose that bit of peripheral vision. Oh, if you've got sunglasses on, pop them away somewhere safe when you go in so you don't drop them down a big hole or scratch them, or scratch them before you even go in. Perfect timing. Um, you'll want them when you come out, I think. It's that, it's that bright and sunny out here. Very important we don't touch any of the calcite formations. If you're not sure what they are, I'll show you when we get in there. They're quite fragile. They can break very easily. Even if we don't manage to break them if we touch them, the oil and acid off our skin stops them growing. Now they grow very slowly, about one, this is ridiculous I know, about one millimetre on average every 10 years, which is crazy when you see the size of them. So it's very important we don't touch them. No food or drinks in the cave, if you've got bottled water with you that's fine. Uh, otherwise, no food or, drink, food or drinks. The reason for that is it's nice and clean in the cave. If we start spilling food scraps, of course, that'll change very, very quickly, and that's not what we want to happen inside the cave. Park Victoria jointly manage the reserve here. We work very closely with the Gunai Kurnai Lands and Waters. I'd just like to acknowledge the Gunai Kurnai Elders, both past and present, and also the Gunai Kurnai people being traditional custodians of the land. You got your cameras with you? Take as many photos as you like. People with fancy cameras frighten you a little bit because there's so much to take a photo of in there, you can be in there for three days. You know? So you'll manage. Just take lots. You'll manage. Um, it doesn't matter if you use flash either, that doesn't matter in there. If you need a little bit of extra light, I can sometimes help out with the torch, but usually you'll work that out. Has anyone got any questions about anything? All good? All good? I think we might get us into the cave now. Uh, as I said, the ladies in the visitor centre like to know how many people go in and at the same amount of come out. So I'll grab your tickets on the way in, we'll get you down to the bottom of the ramp. I promise I will follow you in, but I've got to make a call to the office first. Sometimes it takes a couple of minutes to get through. But I will follow you in. Sound alright? Alright, I'll get down the entrance. You have We've got nine all, nine all up. One, two, three, two, one, two. Five, six, seven, eight. How many have we got? Or you guys are different, all right? How many on this ticket? Nine. We'll get you all in. So whoever's on this ticket, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know when you mix your Milo in the milk? Yeah. Right? And you dissolve the Milo in there, you put one spoon in, it's not very chocolatey. 
you put what we usually do, 10 spoons in, <laughs> and it's really concentrated chocolate milk, isn't it? You don't get chocolate milk in the cave, but it's the same idea. When the rainwater comes through, it dissolves the limestone like you dissolve your Milo and your milk, right? What comes into the cave, though, is these droplets of water that you'll see around. They might even drip on you. It won't turn into a stalagmite and it won't hurt you. But that drop of water there, what that leaves behind oh, is calcite. It's the calcite that makes our cave decorations, things like stalactites and stalagmites, we'll talk Mommy. about a bit further on. Now, our calcite formations can go from tiny little things that look like a grain of rice to the big ones like these behind us here that we call flowstones and a whole bunch in between. Do you think we should go and have a look? Now, we're going to be single file. Oh, yeah. well, uh, you picked them last time, not another thing, Miss Lassen, yes, sir? I've got They're hollow, they're narrow, a lot have a little drop of water hanging from the bottom of them. They look like straws, they're made of calcite. The first drop of water that comes through leaves behind a little calcite ring. So think of a little midget lifesaver lolly stuck to the roof. That's your first calcite ring. Then the next drop of water comes through, leaves another calcite ring and so on. So those ones that we see that look like straws, that keep growing to the boards of the floor. Guess what they're called? Any ideas? Looks like a straw. It's called a straw. No, no. <laughs> That's like, not someone like it. <laughs> so they're called a straw. If they, if the scientists kept it all that simple, it'd be easy, wouldn't it? Yeah. But they don't. Now, what can happen to a straw is a straw can block. So you can see my torch from where you're standing. If that was a straw, every time that water came through, the straw would keep growing. But the straw might block. It might block with a bit of calcite crystal or a bit of dirt or debris from outside. Now that concentrated calcite solution that's coming in is forced to run down the outside of the block straw. So about 80% of our stalactites are actually formed simply through a block straw. So a stalactite, if you want to remember, 
Stay tight, holds on tight. That's the best way to remember. Never remember. Yeah. Doesn't. I mean, who cares anyway? It's only a name. You know. Stay tight, holds on tight. Now, if the water was coming in really quickly, then the calcite builds up from the floor. So we have our stalactite. Stalactite holds on tight. Stalactite might make it to the roof. That's a good way of remembering it. If they join, they're on a collision course, and they join, they form a column or a pillar, just like that one there. Our big pond here in the front of the gods, we call our ponds in the caves ring pools, and you'll see they've all got that lovely scalloped edge on them. That's the build-up of calcite. Now, when it gets deep enough, that pond, it's going to overflow and it comes over Niagara Falls, which is what we call this one. <laughs> and when the water sheets over that, if you've ever been to the Melbourne Art Gallery and you've seen the water running down the windows, that's what it looks like. So the water actually flows over the top of the flow stones. Again, what gets left behind is the calcite. So whether it's a tiny little straw or a great big flow stone, it's all the same. It's the water coming in and where the calcite's left behind. How often does that flow on? Uh, usually this time of the year, in between winter and spring, we'll see it'll go over a number of times because we've usually got enough rain there for that to fill it up and have that happen. How thick is this? Don't know, but it would be very thick. And it's all yeah, calcite. Right? All calcite. There's probably a bank of mud or rock underneath it but all calcite, certainly these top layers. Now, for you kids, you might... So as you come around the corner, I'm just going to shine my light on the roof so you know roughly where I'm at. You won't be able to miss it. As you come around the corner, the steel cable you'll find on your right side, have a look on the bit of limestone up there, the bluey-grey rock, and you can see very clearly the shells in there. We'll make our way... There we go. Ooh. Wow. Done in the sky, eh? Now any of the mum now as you come through the face don't need just move forward a little so we can fit everyone in. It's a bit of a squeeze but we'll fit everyone in. Some people can look at things forever and not see them and others see it straight away. There's the trunk. And all the leaves over on the palm trees. Now, I know this isn't as exciting, but it's interesting. Here, we, remember we're following a streamway? What we're looking at here is an ancient riverbed. Now, ancient, ancient riverbed, streambed. So what happened is the scientists removed some of those black pebbles. That's why the little yellow flags are out there. Deakin University removed them. And they worked out, they believe those rocks that they removed, 780 thousand years old. Yeah, see, it, isn't it ridiculous when you start putting time frames? It's easy to walk through and go, that's lovely. But when you start putting time frames to it, it just goes, doesn't it? It's pretty incredible. Um, but when you think the calcite formations grow on average, estimated in these caves, one millimetre every ten years, and you'll get the size of some of the calcite Four hundred million years ago, they're saying that we were we were under an ocean. So then the oceans receded, and that ocean floor has uplifted, compacted, and formed our limestone.
Now, this is a princess royal chamber, this one. If anyone wants a photo in front of that one there. But in saying that, way back, they, they, they didn't have the knowledge that we have nowadays, you know, as far as growth rates and all that. So, I mean, some, it never happened here. Um, but some caves, you'd go in, they'd say, just break a bit off for a souvenir. Take a straw home with you. No, they just break a bit one walk out with a pocket full of straws. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, the, go figure. The, that was a really big thing at the Janolan. Limestone is because of the, the shellfish and the corals decomposing in that ocean. Hello, Mr. Blogger, how are you going, man? Yep, yep. So that's why we've got our lines up. What, what we used to do is we used to have to turn around at the last room and go back to see a We never had a season. So what we did in 1929, we dug all this money out of here to get to our exit. Big difference to the eastern grey kangaroos that you see outside now. The eastern grey kangaroos that you see outside now are grazing the grasses. This fellow here, this lived here, it's a big corner kangaroo, it lived here on the surface about 20,000 years ago. And it was designed to pull and break branches and stems out of the trees and then chew on those. So that's why it's got that powerful jaw and arms and shoulders. What we think happened, if you have a look up here, we've got cave coral here, or pop coral, or really bad broccoli for the kids. Mm -hmm. Now, the only way you get that growing is if you've got a higher so, 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 evaporation rate. So that means that up here it was over the backside at some back. point. So <laughs> what we're pretty sure mm -hmm. happened is when that was over to the outside, that angle was dead on the outside of some of the bones. Mm -hmm. That's why we were digging this out and found those bones. Now we do call it the skeleton chamber. I haven't got a skeleton to show you, but just on the wall there you see a couple of white bits. They're actually toe bones. But many years ago, Australia yeah. Post had megafauna stamps. Yeah. I met the artist that created all those stamps, and I was talking to him about it. And I said, so how do you know? Well, hours and hours and hours of really, basically, forensic medicine to come up with what the muscle structure, blah, blah, blah would have been in order to create stamps. Yeah, that's... Hard work for stamps. That's amazing. And, and I guess yeah, that's, that's where like, they get all this stuff from. That was a like a little bit longer than 10 years ago, was it? I think it probably would have been. I can't remember. I should remember it. But no, it might, yeah, it might have been that long ago. Was history, so I, I used to get, like, yeah, I reckon it would have been that long ago. 